Hey, Evan Reese here, and today we are talking about selections in Onshape, all the way from the most basic beginner stuff through to the most advanced techniques that I am aware of. I think that most people aren't using all of them, so stick with me, and I hope you'll learn something new. So when I say selections, I'm talking about this, just picking things in the window. Pretty basic, right? Uh, if you've done any work in Onshape, you must have made some selections. So to deselect these, I can click on the white space here, which is great, but um, most of the time I tend to use the space bar to do the same. Um, and I recommend you start picking up that habit because if you're zoomed way in here, it can feel really challenging to deselect things, but space bar will do it. Um, also, you can box select things. And so you'll notice that if you drag from left to right, um, you get a blue window and anything that is fully within that window will be selected. From right to left, you get an orange window with a dotted line and anything that is touching that window will be selected. Um, pretty handy stuff, similar to some other systems. But beyond that, um, there are sometimes are times when you want to choose things that aren't visible right now. For example, if I wanted to pick the face that's behind here, um, it's not super obvious how to do that. I can right click here and choose select other, and you'll see a little target shows up. And anything that's in the line of that target uh, is in this list. So I can either choose this first face, and it tries to do it kind of in order of front to back. I can choose that first face. I can choose the whole part, or I can choose that back face. So that's one way that without having to rotate the model around, I can choose that back face. And I almost never get to that tool by the right click menu because there's a hotkey for it, which is the tilde. Uh, it's the little squiggle above your tab key. So if I mouse over this and I start just hitting tilde, it will cycle through those options. See that? So I can just pick that back face. Works for edges too. So imagine I'm filleting these and I don't want to have to rotate the whole model around. I can just quickly mouse where this edge ought to be. Tab through a few times here and I've got that edge. Uh, so that's a handy way to work. Um, if you're doing a lot of selecting through things, you can actually do it by changing the view and you can pick through objects. So if I go here to the camera render options and go, instead of hidden edges removed, change them to visible. Now I can actually pick all of these edges directly through the model. This is really helpful when you're doing lots of little fillets and rounds at the end of your, uh, end of your work. So a lot of times I'll do it that way. Now I actually have hotkeys set up. Uh, to where I can quickly change to this view, choose some stuff, and then change back to my default view. So I encourage you to uh, look up the help documentation, and set up your own hotkeys to work for however you like to work. All right, so that's the basics and maybe some intermediate stuff that you didn't know. And if you're getting value out of videos like this, I hope that you'll like and subscribe to my channel. Um, but now I'm going to get into the create selection dialog, which offers us some more logic based ways to create batch selections, automate some of these things based on logic. And this dialog box, there's a few ways that you can access it um, in certain tools like uh, move face. For example, you'll see this create selection button that brings up that window. Um, it's there in a few other tools. You can also right click somewhere and go select, create selection, and it brings up this dialog. And then for certain things, if you're just doing a quick one, you can actually right click on an object and right click, select, and you can either pick create selection here or it kind of shortcuts you to a few of the, the options inside. But we're gonna actually go create selection and I'm gonna tour you through all of this because a lot of it isn't um, necessarily self-evident exactly what to expect just based on this and it's really helpful to see a demo so i'm going to go through it top to bottom first we have faces and edges you should already know when you're in here which you're choosing and the nice thing about that is it'll begin to filter your selection so i can't even choose an edge when i'm in faces mode and i can't even choose a face when i'm in uh, edges mode which is a little bit different for example than if i were out here trying to box select this entire tower i'm getting edges and faces May not matter all that much, but it could. Um, okay, so next we have, this is basically the logic scheme by which we're going to select faces or automate the selection. So protrusion, if I grab that, as its name implies, is gonna grab the entire protruding object on my part. Um, but the name is somewhat of a misnomer, and I, I think it's a good name. It uh, makes it usable in a conversation, but what this, um, is really doing is not looking for protrusions so much as looking for any faces that are connected to your selection by other convex edges. And a convex edge is a, a corner that points outward. So this is convex and concave edges. So if I can get to another face by a convex edge, 
then this protrusion mode will do that. I picked this face and I can traverse this edge to get to that face and continue on around to get to this face. But all of the edges at the base here are concave. So nothing beyond that is selected. Likewise with this kind of tabletop shape, I can get all around this object by traversing uh, convex edges. But here, once I get up to the top, I'm not actually getting the entire, what I would think of as the protrusion, which is the whole object in my mind, um, because we have a concave edge here that's stopping the selection. So worth noting, it's really convex connected faces and pocket is the inverse. So it is concave connected faces. Um, so for example, with this tabletop, we can actually get from here down the legs of the table on a concave edge over there, concave edge up, you know, and so forth. So we're getting a, a pretty big selection. Or if I wanted to choose uh, like a, you know, an actual pocket, I would choose that. Um, and now that you know how the logic is working, you'll understand why this little shape here in the middle wasn't selected. If I want that, I can choose another face and it will select that as well. So it's looking for any, any faces that are concave connected. Hole um, is a little bit more subtle in exactly what's going on under the hood. But if you generally just think of it as things that are made with the hole tool or are round or cylindrical holes, uh, you'll be in pretty good shape. So if you choose this, what it's doing is finding uh, a negative space of a cylinder. It might be connected to some sort of flat face like this counter bore, and it might be connected to some sort of conical face at the end, like the end of the drill. Um, but in short, if it's whole like, this will probably work for you. Um, and this is a really good opportunity to also show you how the select patterns option works here, which is available in any of the modes, but as uh, this is a good demo. So if I pick this face, you'll notice that it selects all of the holes. And what it's doing under the hood is just finding any face that is identical to the one that you picked. This is actually uh, the same way that the replicate tool in the assemblies work. If you're gonna pattern uh, using replication, it's kind of the same thing. So it'll find anything that's identical. Um, where hole breaks down is if you actually don't have a complete cylinder. So here I made this, this counterboard hole with the whole feature, but because I added a rib, um, that's going to break the logic and it doesn't know what to do. But if I pick here, you'll see, I'm still getting that bottom face. So worth knowing that it, it's looking for entire, uh, cylindrical or conical faces. Fillets, um, is a really helpful one and especially having some of these other options. So if I choose a fillet, uh, it will find a fillet of an equal size. Um, but you can also change it to equal or smaller radius or, or greater radius. And I think this is especially going to be powerful for those of you who are working with imported geometry. If you're, uh, you're importing a part has a ton of fillets already, and you needed to find and edit all of them, for example, using the modify fillet feature, um, or the delete face set to heal, something like that. Um, this could be a really great way because the design might have large fillets that help define the form of the object, but you're really only after things that are like 0.3 millimeters or smaller, for example. Uh, and this would let you pick all of those in an automated way. So, um, not, not even to mention the, the sort of, uh, you know, legwork of having to actually find them all and click them all, but well, well just click them all, but th this will help you find them too. So it can be a good way to explore an imported model. Um, tangent connected. I think is fairly familiar to most people. If you look in the fillet feature, for example, we have this tangent propagation. This is basically the same thing. Um, so if I go create selection, tangent connected, and I choose this face, it will grab any that are uh, connected essentially in a smooth way. So this edge here is neither concave nor convex, um, and it's actually a smooth tangent edge. And in my case, it's actually showing up as a dotted line because I have my settings here. Tangent edges are set to phantom. Um, by default, you'll see this, but I like to have a little visual indication of when my edges are tangent and not. I think it looks a little cleaner. So that's my preference. All uh, right, bounded faces. I think this is probably the least intuitive option in here, but it's pretty powerful. So let me show you how it works. Um, Bounded faces is actually looking for a minimum of two selections and it's going to take the first one as an indication of which side of your boundary that you select after you're trying to get. And I'm sure that makes no sense. Let me demo it. Um, so if I wanted to get all these stair steps, you'll know, like we couldn't get them all with the protrusion because it's only getting one step. And likewise, if I change it to pocket, it's also not going to get everything. So we can get it all with bounded faces. 
Uh, the first selection that you make is going to help Onshape know which side of your boundary to get. And then the next thing is just, it needs to fully enclose a region on the model. This face happens to do that. So everything on this, the side of this face, uh, like this, this selection tells it which side. So, um, you could also, instead of choosing that edge, I could choose this face and get the whole tower, for example, or I could choose, um, these edges around the top and it's picking everything until I close it up. And you can see we're getting all of that. So that's bounded faces, a uh, really powerful, really powerful way to select stuff. Let's go look at edges now. Most of these are going to be pretty familiar based on what we were just looking at. Um, tangent connected works as expected. Loop chain connected is really handy. It will actually pick the entire border of a face that you choose, or if you um, have an open area like this, um, and I right click this, select, loop chain connected, it will select all of the open edges, which is really helpful if you might follow it up with a fill feature, for example. Let's get rid of that. Um, what else have we got? Equal length and radius behaves about how you would guess. Um, so these are all arcs of the same length. These are all edges of the same length and you can add multiples. So, uh, now it's looking for any edge that's equal to this one or to that one parallel. I think it's also more self-explanatory getting all the edges that are going in the same direction. Um, as you could guess, it really only works with lines, straight, straight lines. Um, and you can stack them up. So now I'm getting any, any edge that's in either of these two directions. So that is the full, the full gist of how you use the create selection dialog to automate your selection process. Um, a lot of people's very next question is, does the selection persist? If you use the tool to make a selection in your fillet feature, for example, um, and then you change your model, will the selection update based on that logic? And the answer is no. Uh, it is just a way to automate the otherwise potentially tedious process of picking things by hand one at a time. And it's still really valuable for that. Um, but I do think there's room for uh, some more smart, persistent uh, selections like that, especially for things like fillets, where they happen uh, commonly late in the model. And the if the model is in flux at all, a lot of those references will just keep getting broken as you're doing development. So I actually created a feature called Selection Fillet. Um, And it lets me create selections in a similar way. Um, there's even some more options here and I'm not going to demo the whole feature here. I'll do it another day, but, um, just so you can understand how this works. If I go faces, bounded faces, I broke it out. You know, I said there's a minimum of two selections. So I broke it out. It makes more sense to my brain. There's my bounded face. And then my bounded entities can be this, um, or even these edges. And then I've got it set to pause regeneration, makes it a little easier to tell what's about to be filleted. And it doesn't uh, waste all the time as you're building a selection, trying to fill it and failing, and then you add more and it has to recalculate. So if you're doing a lot of fillets, you know, I'm doing 136 edges here, um, that can get a little tedious. So that solves both problems, but when I'm ready, I'll unpause it. And you can see we've got fillets on all of these faces. And the nice thing about it is if I go upstream and update the, uh, stair steps here that were made with the fun topography meter feature from Michael Pasco. Um, I'll check final here so you can see it update live the result of any changes that I make. And if I add more layers, you'll see that they're still filleted, which is not the behavior I'll, I'll show you is not the behavior you get. If for example, I go to the fillet feature and just grab everything. This looks exactly the same as what we had. But if I update this, any new edges are not going to have fillets um, because all I did was fill up this giant list with specific edges. And when there's new edges, they don't get added to this list. So uh, that's an even more advanced way using feature script that you can create selections. Um, but as of right now, I don't think there's any way to create selections ahead of time using logic that you could then go and use in other features and on shape. If you're listening, I would really like to see something like that. Um, my daydream would be something like a query builder feature where you can build out a whole list of queries based on all kinds of logic and design intent, and then put that query into any 
query field in any downstream feature. I think that could be really powerful. Okay, that is all about creating selections in Onshape basic to advanced. And if you learned anything at all, again, I hope you'll like and subscribe. Um, all right, thanks for watching.